challenge of the Yukon. <laughs> it's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. On King, on your husky. <laughs> gold, gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush with Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Roy Dana was just finishing his midday meal in his cabin on Kino Creek when he heard a knock at the door. As he rose to answer the knock, his right hand slid down momentarily to the heavy Colt revolver slung at his hip. Well, what do you want? Howdy, Dana. Mind if I step inside? Anything you have to say to me, say it right here. Oh, so we're going to get tough, are we? Maybe you don't know who I am. I know who you are. You're Slugger Metz, one of Blackjack Tully's strong arm men. You well informed. Go ahead and speak your piece and then clear out. You're all right. You've been here on Kino Creek a month now, Dana. You put up a cabin, now you're starting to work your claim. So it's time to pay up your mining tax. What? Mining tax? I suppose that's your polite name for extortion money. Call it anything you like. But here on Kino Creek, Blackjack Tully is king. Anyone who wants to work a claim pays a $200 mining tax. And after that, 10% of all the gold you take out of the ground. Listen, Tully may call himself the king of Kino Creek. But to me, he's just a cheap grifter. Meaning what? Meaning I'm not going to pay him a cent. Well, Keep you... your hands right where they are, Metz. Well, you're mighty fast on the draw, Dana. But that still won't save you from the worst beating you ever got unless you kick through with that 200 bucks. You've had your answer. Now mush. Blackjack Tully made his headquarters in the back room of the Kino Cafe. He was seated there, surrounded well, by Slugger several of his horse. henchmen, when Slugger Metz returned later that afternoon. Well, how about it, Slugger? <laughs> you collect all my monthly taxes for me? I collected from everybody except one guy. Yeah, who was that? That new miner, Roy Dana. What's the matter with him? He's looking for trouble? Yeah, he pulled a gun on me. Said he wasn't going to pay up. Oh, he did, huh? Well, you know what to do. Take the rest of the boys with him. Go out and give him a real going over. Yeah? We'll see if that won't change his mind. Yeah, right, boss. Come in. There's a guy here to see you, boss. Who is it? That miner, Clint Gresham. Well, send him in. All right. Go on in, Gresham. I got news for you, Blackjack. What's up? I was just talking to that new fella, Roy Dana. He's packing up his gear and getting ready to clear out. He told me he's going back to Dawson City and report to the Mounties. <laughs> he thinks he's going back to Dawson. Looks like he's really asking for it, huh, boss? He's asking for it, all right. How do you want us to handle him? Go after him and shoot him. And get rid of all the evidence. What? What's you, Husky? Slugger, Metz, and Jeb drove the dog team and sled along the rock-studded trail that rimmed Eagle Canyon. Jeb was riding in the sled. They approached a huge boulder formation. Jeb shouted, Hey, Slugger, uh, there's a place we can wait for Dana. Yeah, you're right. I'll stop the dogs. Gee, you husky. With the skill of an expert dog handler, Slugger glided his dogs and sled off the trail to the shelter of the huge rock. Hold there, hold, hold. Hold there. There, that does it. He won't see the dogs at the sled until he's real, up real close. <laughs> Don't worry. He won't get that close. Get that right from the sled. Right. We'll get behind the rocks. As soon as we see him coming along, I'll fire my six-shooter. That'll stop him. I could grab him with a rifle. No, no, no. This has to look like an accident. Yeah, that's right. Say, you sure we haven't missed him? He might be gone already. Clint said he was packing his gear. Get ready to go. We had plenty of time to stop him. I sure hope so. Be curtains for all of us if the Mounties got wind of what's going on up uh, here. Don't worry about the Mounties. Blackjack runs Kino Creek the way he wants to. 
And no red coat can bring Marty Law to this part of the country. You mean Blackjack would kill a Mountie? Well, he told us to kill Dana, didn't he? Uh, yeah, Hold it, Jeb. Hold it. Here, the dog team. Yeah, yeah, it's Dana. Get set, Jeb. But don't use the rifle unless you have to. It was several weeks later in Dawson City. Sergeant Preston was on duty at Mounted Police Headquarters when a young sourdough came into the office. Herrick is my name. Lou Herrick. Oh, glad to know you. I'm Sergeant Preston. Have a chair. Thanks. What can I do for you? I'm here to report the disappearance of my partner. His name is Roy Dana. I think he's been murdered. For quite a while, Roy and I have been on the lookout for a good claim. Then last August, we got wind of a new gold strike up on Keno Creek. That's quite a ways northeast of here. Yes, I know. Roy was out of a job at the time. So we arranged that he'd go up there first and stake out a claim and get things started. Later on, I was to join him. When was that? A couple of weeks ago. I finally quit my job and headed up to Keno Creek. When I got there, I found Roy's cabin all right. But the place was cleaned out and Roy was gone. Couldn't you find out anything about him from the other miners on the creek? No, that's the funny part of it. No one would tell me anything. They all seemed frightened. A lot of them wouldn't even talk to me. But then I had an idea. What do you mean? Well, before Roy went up to stake out a claim, we shared a cabin here in Dawson. Whenever one of us would go out and want to leave a message for the other one, we'd write a note and hide it on top of a rafter. So? So after I talked to the miners, I went back to Roy's cabin and looked. Sure enough, I found a note he'd left for me. Do you have the note with him? Yes, I have it right here. Go ahead and read it. All right. Dear Lou, things are in a bad way here. There's a man named Blackjack Tully who calls himself the King of Keno Creek. He and his gun hands are carrying on a reign of terror. They tried to make me pay $200 to work the claim, but I refused, which means they'll be out to get me. I decided to head back to Dawson. If I don't make it safely, you'll know what happened to me. Signed, Roy. That's why I think he's been murdered. From the sound of this letter, you may be right. Have you Monty's had any information before this about what's going on up there at Keno Creek? No, not a word. The constable was sent up there to keep order when the gold strike was made, but that was just temporarily. There aren't enough men on the force to keep a man stationed there permanently. But you'll send someone out to investigate Roy's disappearance, won't you? Don't worry about that. If Roy Dana's been murdered, the Northwest Mounted Police will find the men who killed him. I'll report to the inspector right now and ask to be assigned the case myself. If he's willing, we'll start for Keno Creek immediately. With the weather clear and the trail hard-packed, the trip to Keno Creek was completed in ten days. When Sergeant Preston and Lou Herrick arrived in sight of the mining camp, the sergeant called a halt. Looking! Hey, what, are you huskies, are they? what are we stopping for, Sergeant? I think it'll be better if we aren't seen together, Lou, so we'll split up here. You go on to your cabin, and I'll start questioning some of the miners along the creek. Perhaps I can pick up some information before I call on Blackjack Tully. Anything you say, Sergeant. In the meantime, good luck. Oh, thanks, Lou. All right, on ten, on your husky. After separating from Lou Herrick, Sergeant Preston began making the rounds of the cabins along the creek. Looking, oh, 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 oh. looking, here, boy. Sergeant Preston. What? Joe Carver, I didn't know you had a claim up here. Well, I sure didn't expect to see you and King up this way either. Come on in. Come on, King. Pull up a chair. Fix you some coffee. Why, thanks, Joe, but don't bother. I'm hoping you can give me some information. Information? About what? About the situation here on Keno Creek. I, I don't know what you mean. Well, you know well enough what I mean. Blackjack Tully and his hired thugs are conducting a reign of terror among the miners. Is that why you came here? I came here to enforce the law. What happened to Roy Dana? He's dead. Murdered? I reckon so. How'd you find out about it? Tully and his gang saw to it that the news got around among the miners. He figured it'd scare us more than ever. Have you been forced to pay tribute to Tully? Maybe. Maybe not, huh? I'm not talking. Look, Joe, this situation can be cleared up, but I'll need evidence. Evidence? If I was to make any charges against Tully, give you an excuse to arrest him, my life wouldn't be worth a plugged nickel. Neither would yours. Is that supposed to frighten me? For the love of Mike, Sergeant, you don't realize what you're up against here. 
If you take my advice, you'll clear out while you're still healthy. Well, I said I came here to enforce the law, and I intend to do just that. This isn't Dawson. We're in the back country, a couple of hundred miles from the nearest Mountie post. What do you think one man can do against a whole crew of gun slicks? You speak as though all the miners are spineless. Am I to take it that if it comes to a showdown, none of you will be on my side? Sure, we'll be on your side, but... But you'll never get the miners to make a stand-up fight. They're all scared to move, same as I am. Maybe I can change their minds. I tell you, it's hopeless. They don't even trust each other. Tully's got spies who report everything that goes on. You mean he has spies among the miners themselves? That's right. Do you know any of them? Well, I know one of them. Clint Gresham. Clint Gresham, eh? Now, uh, suppose I do manage to organize a handful of miners who'll stand up against Tully. May I count you in? Yeah, I reckon you can. But I still say it's hopeless. Well, Joe, we'll see about that. Almost every miner whom Sergeant Preston visited displayed the same attitude. An attitude of fear and apathy. Darkness was falling when he finally arrived at the Kino Cafe, which was located near the end of the creek. The place was crowded with sourdoughs. But a hush fell over the room as they saw the Mountie enter and walk up to the barkeeper. What can I do for you, Redcoat? I'm looking for Blackjack Tully. He's in the back room. I'll tell him you're here. Don't bother. You're Blackjack Tully? Yeah. That's my name. I suppose you're Sergeant Preston. That's right. I heard you'd come to Kino Creek. Pull up a chair. Thanks. That's a fine-looking dog you got there. I wouldn't try to pat his head. King sometimes takes a dislike to certain people. <laughs> I sometimes take a dislike to certain people myself. What can I do for you? I won't waste words, Tully. The Northwest Mounted Police has received information to the effect that you and your henchmen are terrorizing the miners here on Kino Creek. Would you ever get that idea? It also appears that you forced the miners to pay extortion money in order to work their own claims in peace. Craziest thing I ever heard of. You deny it? Certainly I deny it. Have you found any miner who's willing to make any charge against me? No, I haven't. Oddly enough, none of them seem to want to talk. <laughs> in that case, I guess there's nothing much you can do. No, you're right. For the time being, there's nothing much I can do. So I'm leaving Keno Creek tomorrow morning... But I'll be back. And if I find that any crimes have been committed, the parties responsible will be arrested and punished. Now, before you go, Preston, here's a little advice. Don't bother coming back. We don't need any redcoats here. We don't want any redcoats here. What's more, you won't find this place very healthy. I said I'd be back, Tully. So watch your step. Three days after the sergeant's talk with Blackjack Tully... Lou Herrick received a visit from Slugger Metz. Well, Herrick, I see you've taken over Roy Dana's claim. Sure, I was his partner. Who are you? The name's Metz. Slugger Metz. I'm uh, Blackjack Tully's tax collector. His tax collector? Yeah, that's right. You see, uh, in order to work a claim here on Kino Creek, you have to pay a mining tax of 200 bucks. What? And suppose I refuse... Well, I wouldn't do that if I was you, Herrick. Dana tried to fight the system, and, uh... Well, as you know, he hasn't been heard from since. You mean he... He was killed? <laughs> I'll let you draw your own conclusions. Hey, eh? wait a minute. That signet ring you're wearing... Huh? That belonged to Roy. Well, uh... Let's say it was a little... Going away present, huh? You've got plenty of nerve coming here wearing that ring. The police... When the police you find out, you... take it easy, Herrick. In case you don't know it, that Monty Sergeant Preston mushed out of here three days ago, which means he's a long way from here by now. So don't go counting on help from the law, huh? What's to keep me from going to Dawson City and telling my story at Monty headquarters? Don't try it, Herrick. Because you never get away from here alive. Now, are you going to come across with that 200 bucks? Or am I going to have to take steps? Looks like you're holding all the aces. I'll pay you the money. <laughs> now you're using your head, Egg. 
Now you're using your head. <laughs> Late that night, there was a knock at the door of Lou's cabin. After getting up out of his bunk and lighting a candle, Lou opened the door. Oh, Come on in, Sergeant. You too, King. Thanks. Come on, boy. Anything happened yet? Yeah. I finally had a visit from one of Tully's tax collectors. A fellow named Slugger Metz. Good. You paid him the money? Yeah, just like we arranged. Let me tell you something else. While he was here, he practically admitted that Roy had been murdered. I'm afraid there's no doubt about that, Lou. He was even wearing a signet ring that belonged to Roy. That will serve as evidence against him. What's the next move, Sergeant? Here's a list of a dozen miners. Joe Carver believes they're trustworthy. Sometime tomorrow, go to each of them and tell them to assemble here at your cabin at 8 o'clock tomorrow night and bring their guns. All right. Anything else? Yes. I also want you to go to Clint Gresham. Pretend you're inviting him to join the meeting, but instead of telling him to come to your cabin, tell him to go to that big rock formation west of the creek. What's the idea? Now, here's my plan. We know that Clint Gresham is one of Tully's spies. The following day, Lou went to see Clint Gresham to inform him about the meeting. Oh, howdy, Harry. Let me inside, quick. I don't want anyone to see me. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Come on in, come on in. Yeah, what's up? Now, look, Gresham. If I tell you something confidentially, can I trust you not to repeat it in the wrong places? Well, uh, of course you can trust me, Harry. I, I won't be the word of it. All right. I reckon you don't like the way Tully runs things around here any more than the rest of us do. I do doggone right I don't like it. Something ought to be done about that dirty crook. Well, here's your chance. Tonight, a bunch of the miners are going to hold a secret meeting to discuss ways and means. Do you want to throw in with us? Sure I do. Uh, where is the meeting going to be held? Be at that big rock formation west of the creek at 8 o'clock. Good enough. I'll be there all right. As soon as Lou had left the cabin and disappeared from sight, Clint hurried to report the news to Black Jack Tully. <laughs> Hey, boss. Well, what are you looking so excited about, Gresham? Wait till I tell you, boss. A bunch of the miners are fixing to hold a secret meeting tonight. What's huh? that? Yeah. They're going to discuss ways and means of changing things around here. Oh, they are, are they? How'd you find out? I found out from Lou Herrick, that new guy that just took over Dana's claim. He came around to my cabin and invited me to join the meeting. Well, that sneaking skunk. Should we go out and give him the works, boss? Oh, uh, we can attend to him later. What time's the meeting set for? Eight o'clock at that big rock formation west of the creek. Uh-huh. What do you want me to do, Black Jaggy? Start rounding up the boys. Yeah. Tonight, I want you to go out and bust up that meeting and teach those miners a lesson they won't forget. Shortly after eight o'clock that night, Black Jack Tully was seated at his desk in the back room of the cafe when the door what? opened and Sergeant Preston entered. Preston? Get your hands up, Tully. Where'd you come from? I've never been more than a mile away from Keno Creek since the last time I was here. What do you think you're going to do now? First of all, I'm going to find out if you're carrying a gun. Get up out of that chair. Now, look, Preston. I don't know what your game is, but I warn you, you're asking for trouble. Don't forget, I got a whole crew of gunmen working for me. Unfortunately, they can't do you much good at the moment because you sent them all out to break up a miners' meeting. Uh, how'd you know that? I arranged the meeting to get them out of the way. Incidentally, the meeting's not being held at the place you think. Why, you dirty... That will do, Tully. Look, maybe my men are gone, but there's still the barkeep and waiters outside. If I holler for help, that be in still here... won't do you any good. Before I came back here, I collected the guns behind the bar. I also left the miner outside to keep the bartender and waiters covered. Now keep those hands up high while I search you. Watch him, King. Oh. Shoulder holster, eh? Well, I'll just relieve you of this gun for the time being. I'm warning you, Preston. You're making a big mistake. Let me worry about that. Now open up the safe. Open up the safe? Hey, what is this, a holdup? You'll find out soon enough. Look, have you got a search warrant? No, and I don't need one. A mounted policeman on patrol is empowered to take any steps necessary to enforce the law. Now hurry up and open it. What if I won't do it? In that case, I'll have to use force. Meaning that gun you're holding? No. Meaning my fists. Oh, well, that suits me just fine, Preston. Come right ahead. All right, you asked for it. As the sergeant holstered his gun, Blackjack Tully lowered his hands. 
Suddenly, he grabbed up a bottle that was standing on his desk and swung it at Preston. Here, try this for a starter. Oh, no, you don't know. The sergeant's fist caught Tully square on the jaw, sending him crashing back against the chair. Why, you lousy redcoat. Boiling with rage, Tully charged back at the sergeant. <laughs> the next instant, they were standing toe-to-toe, trading rights and lefts with terrific power. The crook was muscled like a bull, and he knew every trick used in the rough-and-tumble brawling of the gold camps. But the sergeant fought coolly and skillfully. You've had this coming a long time, Tully. By thunder, you signed your own death warrant, Preston. Like so? No. And here's another. As the crook weakened, the Mounties' punches landed with even more telling effect. No. Finally, Tully went down and stayed down. No. no. Don't hit me again. I've had enough. Then get on your feet. Yeah. And open that safe. Meanwhile, Slugger Metz and the rest of Tully's strong-arm men had left the cafe at 8 o'clock and were on their way to the rock formation west of the creek. About 20 minutes later, they spied a man running toward them. Hey, that's Clint Gresham. Yeah. Wonder what's wrong with him. What are you coming back for, Gresham? Thought you were supposed to be at the meeting. There isn't any meeting. Huh? At least not at the place they said. They've tricked us. Uh-huh. What's tricked us? What are you talking about? I've been waiting here at the rock formation since a little before 8 o'clock. Yeah. Now it's going on half past and not a single miner showed up here. Yeah. Hey. Holy mackerel. They must have named a fake meeting place to throw us off the track. Just what I'm thinking. What do you think we ought to do, Slugger? I don't know. We'd better get back to the cafe and tell Blackjack. Let him give the orders. All right, let's go. Yeah, let's go. After Blackjack Tully had opened the safe, the sergeant handcuffed him and then began searching through the contents of the safe. One of the things he found was a ledger containing the names of all the miners, each one followed by a number of entries. So you kept track of all the tribute the miners paid you, eh? This should prove very useful as evidence at your trial. Ah, you're crazy. The miners all kept charge accounts at the cafe. That's all that is. I'll see what the miners have to say about that. Hey, what are you going through that pile of cash for? I'm looking for something that will prove definitely that you and your henchmen collected extortion money. Oh, yes, here they are. I don't know what you're talking about. If you look at these particular bills carefully, you'll notice a small pencil mark on each one. Yeah? What about it? Those marks were made by Lou Herrick. They identify these bills as the extortion money which he paid over to Slugger Metz yesterday. I thunder you'll never bring me to trial, Preston. You won't leave Kino Crook alive. It will take more than threats to save you, Tully. You're under arrest in the name of the Crown. After releasing the crook temporarily so he could put on his parka, the sergeant handcuffed him again and escorted him out to the front of the cafe, where the miner, Joe Carver, was keeping the waiters and bartender covered. Why, thunder, you got him, sergeant. Yes, Joe, along with enough evidence to put him and his gang behind bars. I'm telling you, Preston, you'll never leave Kino Crook alive. Just wait till my boys get back here. Sorry, Tully, but I can't wait that long. All right, Joe, let's be on our way. What about the waiters and the barkeep? We have their guns, but keep them covered just in case while we're going out the front door. Right. You better not try following us, gents, because the first guy who sticks his head out the door will stop lead. Let's go. All right, Tony, this is my sled. Sit down. You're going to pay I for said this, sit down. All set, John? Yeah, I'm ready, Sergeant. Hey, wait a minute. Look there, coming up the trail. Yeah, it's my boys. They're coming back. Now, by thunder, you two will get what's coming to you. Hey, Slugger! Keep hurry. quiet and stay on that sled. What are we going to do, Sergeant? We can't get back to Lou's cabin now. They'll cut us off. Yes, you're right. I'll have to send King for help. Here, boy. Go get Lou, King. Lou Herrick. Go on, boy. Hurry. But what about us? We'll have to make a run for it. I know a place where we can hold them off. All right, let's go. On you, Husky. Hush! 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 Urging their teams forward at top speed, the sergeant and Joe headed away from the mining camp. But Tully's men commandeered the other teams that were standing in front of the cafe and followed them in hot pursuit. After a short but desperate chase, the sergeant headed his team down into a barren ravine. What's the idea of coming down here, sergeant? We'll be trapped. I know this place. It's where I camped. There were some boulders at the other end of the ravine where we can shelter. On your husky! Minutes later, the sergeant and Joe reached the far end of the ravine. They leaped from their sleds and dragged Tully with them as they headed for shelter behind the boulders. A few moments later, their pursuers came swarming down into the ravine and the battle was on. Here they come, sergeant. For nearly half an hour, the fight continued. 
From their fortress behind the boulders, the sergeant and Joe managed to account for several of their attackers. But they were too greatly outnumbered, and finally the situation began to grow desperate. We've plugged a few of them, Sergeant, but that's not going to do us much good if we run out of ammunition. I've just got a few rounds left. I told you you'd never get away from here alive, Preston. They haven't taken us yet. Got a slug in your fire, Joe, and from now on, make every shot count. All right, Sergeant. As the shots from behind the boulders came less and less frequently and finally ceased altogether, Tully's men prepared to close in for the kill. Looks like they're out of ammunition. Come on, boys. Let's close in on them. Yep, you and Clint circle around. Hey, where are those shots coming from? Holy Michael. Look at bare top of the hill. It's a miners. Find cover, boys. It's every man for himself. We can't protect ourselves. They're up too high. They'll gun us down like rats. I'm a yes, oh my, don't you? you up? A short time later, the crooks had been rounded up and disarmed, and the miners gathered around to congratulate the sergeant. Looks like Blackjack Tully and his gang are through for good. Thanks to you, sergeant. Things might not have turned out so well for Joe and me if the miners hadn't gotten here when you did. Did King lead you here? That's right. We were all waiting at my cabin when King came barking at the door. First, we couldn't figure out what he wanted. But he kept growling and tugging at our clothes till we got the idea. Good old gang. I knew you wouldn't fail us, boy. What'll we do with these crooks, Sergeant? Herd them back to camp? Yes. And tomorrow we'll start back for Dawson. The least they'll get is long prison sentences. And if we convict them of Roy Dana's murder, they'll all hang. You can't pin that on us, Preston. Don't be too sure of that, Tully. Slugger Metz is wearing Dana's ring. The miners can testify that your men spread word of Dana's murder... And we have an incriminating letter that Dana wrote. Hey, now, wait a minute. I'm not going to swing for this shooting. In that case, you'd better talk and talk fast. Shut up, you fool. I won't shut up. I had nothing to do with it. Tully's man bushwhacked Dana and threw his body into Eagle Canyon. Well, Tully, that's all we needed to know. Your reign as the king of Keno Creek is over. When you and your gang have paid the penalty for murder, this case will be closed. In our next adventure, soon after midnight in the barracks at Mounted Police Headquarters, Sergeant mm. Preston is awakened by the constable mm. on duty. Sergeant, uh. wake up. <sighs> what is it, Ollie? Those three trail robbers we've been looking for, they struck again. Where? They just held up Sullivan's Roadhouse south of Dawson. Start hitching our teams, Alex. I'll be right with you. This may be our chance to run down those three outlaws. Sergeant Preston is setting out on a dangerous trail, the trail of three clever and desperate gunmen. If he does succeed in tracking them down, there's sure to be a gun battle, a battle which may cost the sergeant his life. So be sure to hear this exciting adventure tomorrow. These radio dramas, a feature of the challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Enterprises, directed by Fred Flowerday, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. <laughs>